Hello, it's me, Stephanie Flath. Good morning. I'm Stephanie Flath, Stampin' Up! Demonstrator, and I'm doing a live video for you. And I seem to be kind of wiggly this morning. Sorry about that. Um, and I am planning to talk about the Stamparatus today. So before I get into anything, if you have questions right off the bat about the Stamparatus, uh, make sure that you um, ask them right away, okay? Um, I'm thinking that uh, I may do another video to answer any questions another time, just in case that I don't see them uh, while I'm up here. Um, so anyway, uh, let me know if you have questions at any point when you're when I'm going through this. So housekeeping, of course, I have to tell you, in case you didn't read, did, do you guys read my blog or read my um, Facebook page? later after you watch my video because um, Sherry Moore is our winner from last week. So the um, the card that I made on video last week is hers and I will be sending it out shortly. And so congratulations Sherry. <laughs> um, so the way that you can win um, what I'm making you today is by commenting. Um, I do a random drawing from all the comments so make sure that you comment. Let me know that you're listening, watching, um, let me know what you like, let me know if you have questions, um, just comment away. Also, I would love for you to share. Share my video, um, tell your friends about me, maybe they would want to see um, me crafting away also and um, would be interested in uh, what I'm doing. So anyway, comment and share and like my post and all that. But for now, this week, um, if you want to, uh, the drawing will be on the people who comment, so just keep that in mind. So anyway, um, so I think that's it for housekeeping, so let me know when you're on. Um, okay, so I'm going to talk about the Stamparatus, as I said. Um, hi, my love, I see you. Thanks for watching. Um... I'm going to be talking about the Stamparatus, and I've been planning to do this at some point. Thanks for saying hi, too. I'm planning to do this, was planning to do this at some point, and then um, I keep using the Stamparatus recently. I kind of, as with everything, it kind of ebbs and flows as far as when I use it or, or um, how often I use it or whatever, and um, just last night even, I thought of a way that I wanted to use it or that I should use it. And so um, that's one of the things that I'm going to be showing also. So um, so I'm showing the Stamparatus. If you have any questions at any point, um, make sure that you let me know, comment. Um, if I see them while, while I still have the video up, then I'll try to answer them uh, here. Hi, Carol. Thanks for watching. Um, if I see them... Uh, while I still have the camera up, then I'll try to answer. Otherwise, uh, I will definitely be answering questions, um, replying to any comments later. Um, I may do another video to answer um, questions or show things if people have things that I can't just say by words or whatever. So anyway, so I'm showing the Stamparatus. It is a positioning tool. Um, now, as I mentioned already, I... Uh, it comes and goes how much I actually... Hi, Julie Clay! No, you're not Clay anymore, but it came up that way. <laughs> Julie Teacouts, I'm not used to uh, um, to talking to you. I'm so glad that you're watching. Um, so the Stamparatus is a positioning tool. Um, I use it... Um, Ah, you can see a reflection. That's too funny. Don't look at the mess. <laughs> um, so it's a positioning tool. Uh, it's for people who, um, well, it's for when situations, oh, I'm sorry you're sick, Julie, um, but I'm glad that you're watching me. That's fun. Um, you're just going to miss me more like I miss you. <laughs> um, it's a positioning tool for um situations when you really need things to <laughs> thanks I, oh yeah my laugh is one of a kind people tell me <laughs> um I, I've, I've been called scooby-doo before <laughs> um so anyway it's for when you want things to be 
just so. Now, some people want things just so a lot more often than um, others do. Uh, I tend to be a perfectionist at things, but in stamping, I've just learned not to be quite so much. So I don't use, um, so I don't use this as often as maybe I should. Uh, I don't know, but anyway. Hi, Pat. Thanks for watching. Um, so anyway, I'm I'm just gonna go on with the uh, um, with the Stamparatus. So this is the Stamparatus. Remember, don't look at the mess. You can see it in the reflection. <laughs> I didn't plan that well, holy cow. Um, so it comes with um, uh, two plates. I only show one right here. There's one that um, you attach to the left and one that you attach to the right. That's what you position the stamps on. It also comes with um, a foam mat um, right on here. Now remember when, when we're stamping just normal, um, without the, the Stamparatus, we have a cushion. I usually use my paper piercing mat um, for photopolymer, or sometimes I have a stamp that just kind of, it doesn't want to ink up right or, or stamp right in the center or something like that. Usually it's just with photopolymer stamps. But anyway, so, excuse me. So this mat is a skinny little foam mat um, that helps give you cushion for the photopolymer. So excuse me, when you're not using photopolymer, you still can leave it in here, but, hi Nancy, thanks for watching. Um, but when you, <laughs> when you, when I, when I went to store it, I took it out um, when I was just gonna fold it up. So, uh, that you just have to decide what works best for you or not. But it, um, you don't need it for just clear mount stamps. You can't use wood mount stamps with the Stamparatus because you have to be able to attach your stamps to the plate. So um, that doesn't work with wood stamps. So anyway, so there's a grid here so that you can line up um, line up your stamps, if you line up your, um, your card. You can put it all the way in the corner, but something about um, stamping really close to the edge, it's harder to get a good impression. So that's just something to um, to keep in mind. So I have some washi tape here, which I realized now that I have something else, um, it's not necessary if you keep in mind what line you're working with. I think I did it so that when I'm stamping with customers that they know where exactly I'm, I'm lining up. But anyway, so it comes with um, this. It's got um, uh, a nice hard cover. The lines are covered in plastic. It also comes with two magnets that are very, very strong. I have them on the back here. Um, by the way, I keep trying to work around this, so maybe you are too. Um, if your comments are, if my the comments that are showing up are in the way on your screen when you're trying to watch, um, you can swipe them to the right, I think. so. Um, if they're in the way, you can do that. So the magnets are, there's a spot to store it on the back, okay? So whenever you're not using them, that is the best place to put them. Sometimes I'll still um, put them on the front. I'm going to take one off so that you can see. Um, so it's a, this whole board is a magnet. So um, you don't want to just lay them on the table uh, next to each other or near each other at all. They're very strong and they're very brittle. So um, Stampin' Up! actually did a video of it where two magnets went together and they like they just broke. They they shattered. So anyway, be really careful with your magnets. Um, now one of the reasons why I want to do a um, wanted to do a video of the Stamparatus is to, to show you some tricks, but also Stampin' Up! just came out with some um, accessories for this, the Stamparatus. So they do have replacement magnets. They had that um, before. It's in the full catalog right now. But they came out with a pad of mini grid paper that fits right in the Stamparatus so that you have um, um, scrap underneath while you're stamping that's perfectly sized for it. So um, it comes in a pad of like 50 sheets here, okay? Another thing that they came out with, that they have available now, is they have extra plates. 
Now, it comes with two plates, but if you're working on a big project or um, kind of several parts of projects or whatever, maybe you don't want to have to worry about, okay, one stamp can go on the front, one stamp can go on the back of each of them. Maybe you need more than that. Um, maybe you have a big bouquet you're making or something like that. Anyway, um, so you can buy a set of plates also. Um, the other thing, oh, maybe your mats wear out, your foam mats wear out. You can buy these. And, oh, there's one more thing. This is not anything new once they started with the, um, the accessories. But I have to show you this because it's something that I keep forgetting to show like in class and stuff like that. And that is, don't be grossed out with this. <laughs> the, the one thing that drives me nuts about this is that it just stains, period. This is our Simply Chamois. This is amazing. Um, a way to clean your stamps. Um, even if you're not using the Stamparatus, you can use it, but it's literally like a chamois. Like Todd has one for um, for washing the car. I had never seen one until I met Todd years ago. <laughs> Lots of years ago. Um, but you, it comes wet, um, just barely damp, and it comes in a package, and you need to keep it in a package so that it doesn't dry out. If it does dry out, you can add water to it, but like you, you wring it out so there's no more in it, so it's just damp. Now, if it gets dry, then it just gets hard. Um, so you have to wet it again or whatever. So I've seen, I'll show you how I use this um, when I'm like when I'm in the middle of stamping or whatever. But I've seen suggestions of putting this in one of our um, our standard like DVD size cases um, to store it. And I tried that and it dried out. So <laughs> I'm not recommending that. If you want to try it and you have another way, I'm just putting it in a Ziploc bag because it seems like the bag that it came in like it was rippable or something. I don't know. So anyway, quart size. This is that's what this is. Okay. So um, let's see. So I told you there's magnets, plates, foam mat, small grid paper. Simply chamois is what this is called. Um, and so I'm going to show you some things uh, that I'm doing with this. Now, if you have gotten on since I mentioned this, if you have any questions, specific questions about the Stamparatus at all. Um, let me know, just comment, and um, and also remember that commenting is how you get entered into the drawing for what I'm making today, so um, so make sure that you do that. But if you have questions, um, hopefully I'll see them while I'm just sitting here talking, but if I don't see them, um, and I'll, I'll go back and answer them later. If I feel like I need to do another video to show what I'm talking about, then um, I might do that. Um, either I'll start next week's video with that or maybe I'll do an extra one. So anyway, just let me know if you have questions. So I'm going to put this one away. I'm not using this one. Okay. Excuse my close-up. <laughs> All right. So I am going to be doing some stamping. And so while I'm stamping, I'm not going to see your comments. I might see that it comes up or see that people come on. Make sure that you say hi. And if you have a comment or question, please say so. Um, but I won't be able to answer like right in the moment. I'm going to be stamping and it'll be down. So, um, so you can still chat with me, but I'm just going to take it down for right now. Okay, so before I, I guess before I take it down, I want to, to show you a couple things. Okay, so this card I showed you last week just um, just as one of my samples for using Merry Christmas to All. I love that bundle. And I want to show you this is a really good reason to use the Stamparatus. Let me, oh, <laughs> I always struggle with where to put it. Okay, so we use, I used soft sea foam and when and it's a photopolymer set so that's perfect for trying to line this up except soft sea foam is a really light color and i i figured this out last night that i should have probably used the stamparatus we made this card last night at thanks julie we made this card last night at one of my clubs 
And um, I had to do it a couple times because I couldn't get this lined up right. If I kind of looked at it from underneath, I it was lined up weird. If I looked at it from the top, it was really hard to see the soft sea, soft sea foam frame because it was so light. So anyway, I'm going to show you the apparatus and how to do that. Now, I'm also going to show you, before I get going, this is a card I'm pretty much going to make while I'm on here. I'm going to do it a little bit differently. This one is a uh, compliments of Rogina because I forgot to give her her card at club, her last card at club, um, Monday morning. So this one's yours, Rogina. I'll be <laughs> tucking it in with your order. But uh, it's my sample anyway, so I can show you kind of what I'm doing. So anyway, oh, thanks, Julie. All right, so those are the, the things that I'm going to show you. Let me, so on this card, I'm going to go back to it. I'm using the stamp apparatus for all three of these stamped parts. This, the trees here, the thinking of you, and then also, can you see that there are like tree trunks on here? I'll get up closer. See the tree trunks, isn't that pretty? So the stamp itself is a set of three tree trunks. So I use the stamp apparatus to be able to do all those. It's really cool. Hi Nancy, thanks for watching. I have two Nancy's on here. Ha! I love it. Okay, so I'm going to be doing um, stamping. So I'm going to put you down. Remember, if you have questions or comments, uh, make sure that you mention. I'll get back to them later, even if I don't see while I'm stamping. Um, so I'm going to put you down, and I'm going to show you how I set it up. Okay, so straight down. And I'm sorry, you're kind of going to have to watch me do this upside down because um, I'm, that's just, well, maybe I should do it backwards. We'll see how, we'll see how well I can do this since it's all lined up anyway. Okay, so here's my stamp apparatus. I always hold it, you can hold this whichever way that you want. Um, I do have the foam mat down here because I am using photopolymer. Um, and I want to show you. Um, how I'm going to line this, this is that, um, the frame, the, the soft sea foam frame that I'm going to do with Christmas. So I already have my frame lined up so that I can stamp it right here. Um, and I already did stamp it right here if you can't see it. There's a couple of them on here. This would be a great way to do it um, if you have um, several, um, several tags that you're going to do. Okay, did you see that? I should show you that. So when you lift this plate out, what I always do is I stand it up straight and then tip one end and then it just comes out easier. If you just try to pull it up, um, it doesn't go as well. Okay, so I'm flipping my plate because this side I have my actual frame. So I'm turning it around so I can put my Christmas on here. So I'm going to line up my Christmas. I'm gonna, it's not inked right now. I'm going to put it right on, right in the center of my frame. So I can move it wherever it is that I want it. Okay. And then you close the Stamparatus to pick it up. Oh, and I forgot to mention, look, remember I told you about the magnets? The magnets hold your, um, your cardstock in position. You need to make sure it's out of the way of the stamps. Um, but it holds it in place because especially with photopolymer, um, is it photopolymer or is it the firm foam ink pad? I feel like it's photopolymer. It always wants to pick up the, the cardstock when you're done. So what we're going to do, uh, I'm using uh, Memento because it is photopolymer and I'm going to ink up my Christmas. All right, and I can already see that I didn't do a great job inking it, so that's perfect, actually. So I'm going to stamp my Christmas. Oh, it did ink up well. All right, well, I'm going to pretend I forgot to ink it up again. So um, I had already stamped this one time by lifting it up and taking it down a notch. Can you see that in the video? Am I, am I in it right? 
Okay, so I lifted it up and take it down a notch. Now I'm going to put it, I, and that's the same thing that I did when I stamped this frame. I'm going to put it down here, and oh shoot, I forgot to ink it up. So it's not very good. So you just re-ink, doesn't matter if it's a little or a lot that you forgot. Ink it up again, stamp it again, right in its spot. I love that. Okay, so I'm going to show you, this is actually a lot of the, the stamping that I already am going to show you in something else. Um, but I'm going to use the, the frame to do a couple more. I probably could have started with Christmas, but I didn't. I skipped a notch. So there's one. Lift it. Go back up a notch. So I can just keep going down here. And I kind of missed. There's one corner that I didn't ink up very well. So I can ink that up better. Right in that spot. There we go. Okay, so I have all those frames. I lifted it. I turned it. Oops, I need to come down one notch. And I'm going to do a couple more Christmas. So I have found, it was kind of interesting. Um, there's another Christmas. I'm sliding this up. It's tending to want to bubble a little bit because the magnets were so far away. Um, and then it wasn't making sure that I was stamping in the exact right spot. All right, so I have all of my Christmases done. Isn't that cute? So now I can run this through the Big Shot. Um, it would have to be four times unless I had four of those exact framelits. So I got all those done um, just that quick because I had it set up for um, the frame and I had it set up for Christmas, both on the same plate. Now if I had something else that I wanted to do, I could have done it on, put another plate in here. Um, but I didn't do that. So I'm done with this part. I'm just going to put this, put this aside. Yeah. Okay. Now the other one that I want to do, I'm going to, I'm going to use this one. Now, one thing that I did not do with the other is it's helpful if you, oh, I did it upside down again. It's helpful if you have something underneath here. The best thing, where did I put it? Just a sec, I'm grabbing the stamp case because that's the best thing. The perfect thickness is the standard stamp case. So we're gonna put it right underneath there, okay. Oh, I forgot. I need to show you. This is a really cool card that I forgot um, has a special design. So I need to show you that first. I don't know what this is called. Um, seems like I came up with a name for it yesterday, and I don't remember what it was. I don't know. Let me show you the card again. Okay, so here's the card. And look, it's a, it's a, it's a, we're just going to say diagonal fold. I'm not, I'm not really sure. So I'm going to show you how the, how you make this. Okay. Really quick. So, you know how you usually, you score once, then you cut once and you're all good. Well, we're scoring twice and cutting once. So I'm lining it up at our normal lines, four and a quarter and five and a half. And I'm scoring. I'm not cutting. I'm scoring both times. Okay, then I need the scoring blade out of the way. Then, can you see the diagonal there? I have, I'm lining up one point of the diagonal on one end and one point of the diagonal on the other end. It kind of goes across your, these guards or whatever, but you need to do that for, to be able to cut it. Then we cut it diagonal. So now, I have a card like this. Oh, and I need my bone folder because 
if you don't do it exactly perfect, then it's, it doesn't line up quite right. So just a second. So I'm kind of pulling out the score line a little bit. So that it can fold well. Phone folders are great for fixing your scoring mistakes. <laughs> okay. So here's my diagonal fold card. Okay. So now I have my stamping. So what I want to do is put my grid paper down here so that I have scrap underneath it. So I see it lines right up. It looks just like what the grid that's already there lines right up with it. It's got the rounded corner and everything. I have one, one magnet there. And remember the other magnets are on the bottom. Okay. So what I'm doing using as a line is um, I'm going at the six inch by six inch line. It's the it's the square that has the Stampin' Up logo in it. So I'm lining my uh, card right up in that corner, and I'm gonna put my magnet down on the very top and on the very bottom. And I actually already, I didn't need to show you this lineup, so I already have this lined up. I did it on the top one, though, um, so that it will go right on my card where I want it. So here's how we can come down. So what I'm going to do is ink up. I realized yesterday that, this is Smoky Slate, by the way. That's the color that I'm using. I realized that um, it is easier to not get ink on your plate um, with the rubber stamps as opposed to the photopolymer stamps. So I'm going to ink this up and flip it and press it. You want to get good pressure on, I'm doing this off camera aren't I? Good pressure, press it up. It's because I'm doing it upside down for you guys this time. Okay, my trees look a little bit light in one spot. Can you see that? It's kind of light. So I'm going to add a little bit more. See how that goes. Press it again. Oh, that's better. I like that. Okay. Now I'm going to flip this. And this one I did differently. Because the saying, can, I, can you read this? The saying says, thinking of you this season. But I just want thinking of you. So I'm going to use my marker. So I always use, am I doing this off? So I always use the side of my brush tip uh, end. I'm just trying to make sure that I don't get it on the rest of the words. Is it on my brush tip end? Sure, there's good ink. And then you. Sorry, I had to look at it closer. Then you have to huff it. You have to give it moisture. <sighs> because. Oh, I forgot that part. Okay, I need to huff it again. I need to move my um my magnet out of the way. <laughs> you can't stamp with the magnet in the way. It just won't work. Okay, so I'm gonna huff it again. Because by the time you do it, by the time you stamp it, when you're using a marker, parts of it can be dry. So the moisture from your breath makes it so that it's good. Ooh, look at that. Can you see it? Ah, okay. So I'm going to set this aside. And now we're going to do that step by step. I'm getting this out of the way. It's just a nuisance. Now we're going to do that step-by-step -step part with the trees, okay? So I have this mounted already on here. Tuck 
sticking it in. And okay, I gotta make sure that I that I oh I still didn't score this right. It's trying to fold on itself. Just a second. Technical difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> this needs to not be trying to crunch itself. That's not okay. Okay, so even though don't the fold down. Yes, fold down. So even though um, my card is landscape, I'm putting it in portrait. So I'm putting it in up and down. Um, because only because of how I have my stamp mounted on here so it's going to come across this way okay and I did make a piece of scrap so that I don't stamp where I don't want it to be so I'm covering this side up with scrap lining my corner up if you line it up the same way every time then you won't have a problem with stamping in the wrong place okay so we're lining up there. All right, now, because I'm doing it this way, it's kind of, well, since you can't really see, I'm going back to the other way because you can't really see what kind of stamp this is, and it's just less awkward for me showing my stamping with my right hand. Okay, so I'm going to ink this up. This is Rich Razzleberry. You know that's my favorite, right? Ink this up, I have my scrap there, and I'm stamping. So there's my set of trees right there. I'm not worried about this little point. It's small enough that it won't be noticed. Okay, so now I'm gonna lift it again, pull it down, ink it up. Stamp it. Can you see it building? Got to lift it, didn't I? That's okay. The order doesn't matter. One more time. No, two more times. I just have much less ink on my plate when I use the clear mount. That's a good thing. I'm gonna mess up and on on purpose and get it on my plate so you can see how I can use the chamois. You probably can't tell, but I got ink on the plate. Okay, so we're gonna press this down here. I wasn't worried about it just because of where it was, but when I did that, when I got it all over the place, I got it on the plate, I got it on the edge of my stamp. You don't wanna do that. Um, so I'm gonna use the chamois and show you how I can clean that off really easy without having to, you know how when you have a well, there's no block to be able to put this on the Stampin' Scrub. So using this with the Stamparatus is amazing. So I can wipe this right off around here. Simply Chamois. I think it's $8? Yeah, it's $8. I'm going to put all the item numbers and stuff on the top in the comments when, um, when I'm done and I edit the video. So I can just get off this, these edges. Probably could use my fingers for the edges too. I tend to do that. Some people don't like that. Okay, so I have everything cleaned off. If I totally wanted to clean my stamp, I could just clean that off. Um, it's just really easy, and I didn't even have to move my stamp to get it on the Stamparatus or whatever. So remember, I'm putting this back in the bag. You need to keep it closed to keep it wet, damp. Okay, now I'm going to show you one more thing. See how on this card, got to get it in the camera. <laughs> See how on this card, there's like an inch here that there's no trees. Well, so I'm going to move it over an inch. Still need my scrap though. So I'm going, I still need six inches here, but I'm going over to seven for the left to right, we'll say. And I need to put my magnets in a different spot for this. Okay, so all I really need to ink up is the bottom of these trees. Oops. The top. That wasn't the bottom, that was the top. 
<laughs> Man, things get mixed, mixed up and on camera and on the stamparatus. All right, so I'm cleaning off that extra. I don't want all that extra on there. It probably wouldn't have hurt it, but I don't, I just, I don't want it. Okay, so now I'm going to stamp it and I'll be right at the bottom here. So I just extended my trees. Oops. All right, so I have them all the way across that diagonal. Cool, huh? Okay. Um, did you see my magnets just collect together here? That's why you keep them apart. It wasn't so bad because this part is a magnet too, so it will hold it in place. But I'm going to get this out of the way, and I'm going to finish assembling the card. So I did the other stuff already. I decided that I was going to use black foil instead of my, um, the other one was the galvanized. I used black foil with the tin tile embossing folder this time. And from cutting, I have a tiny little piece of the, the black plastic kind of comes off a little bit. So I'm going to see if I can, um, I'm putting my ink pad, closing my ink pads. I'm going to see if I can get a little adhesive on there to make it stay down. We'll see if that works or not. It's The top is kind of delicate. Okay, so I already put uh, my tear and tape on the back already too. I always use tear and tape with something that has a lot of texture or is heavy or wants to be folded in a way that it doesn't want to stay. Like pretty much anytime you do boxes you need tear and tape or we used to have something called sticky strip. This is much more user friendly. You can you literally can tear it rather than having to cut it. And uh, it's easier to peel off and it's not staticky so that you can actually get it off your fingers. Oh, and I need a little extra, I, these corners just make me nervous a little bit, so I'm, I didn't get tear and tape all the way in the corner, so I'm just adding a little bit there. Okay, so we're going to put it right on here. Here's my card so far. Then, here's this. And so I use the galvanized paper for my layer underneath since I'm using black for the base. So I'm just using snail for this. This will stay. And then I have to remember, <laughs> I almost forgot this when I was demoing it. No, I forgot what day. So I need to at the top, which is actually at the bottom for me, um, but I don't want it all down at the bottom because remember it's holding on just at the diagonal, okay? So, peeling off the backing. And then we'll put this right on here. Okay, so remember, here's our card, can you see it well? So remember, make sure that you're commenting because this is what's up for grabs. Uh, I'm doing a random drawing to, for you to be able to um, win this. So uh, I think that was it. So I have one more card to show you just by looking. So I'm going to pick you up. Hi, Kathy. Um, I, um, okay, so here's another card that we made. Um, for at my Christmas stamp camp. So can you see the, the stars? There's dangly stars here. Here's a set of four, and here's a set of lots of them. They, they look kind of like the, the beads. Um, uh, anyway, this is these are individual stamps. Here's a stamp, and here's a stamp. So I did the same thing with this that I did with the set of three trees. I set up two of them and then just used the notches to come down. So anyway, ooh, thank you. Um, 
Julie, are you talking about the one that I just got done, or are you talking about this cute little penguin one? <laughs> um, uh, I love these colors. Oh, and this is soft sea foam again. So this is the same color that I had the, with this. I just really like soft sea foam. It's not my favorite, but it's one of them. So this is Highland Heather, and yeah, I like the penguin. Oh, and I like this ribbon too. It's striped gorgeous grape yeah so anyway so these are um some samples that i made with the stamparatus i told you about the simply chamois i love that for cleaning on the stamparatus it's an amazing positioning tool um oh i haven't told you about it okay so the stamparatus itself is 49 dollars, and it comes with the, the the magnet board the two plates the mat the two magnets it comes everything that i was using except for um the grid paper so that's completely separate but it's 49 dollars, and you get all those things and um it's just great for first of all being able to do the, the i love being able to do the step down like have you seen um julie i don't know if you saw my my first um uh I don't know when a, a, a different video I don't know which one it was but um, when I talked about the Stamparatus you can um, like have you seen cards that say thank you thank you thank you so you can do that with the Stamparatus and have them completely lined up and I love that so um, so anyway I oh I forgot one thing on my card all right I'm not gonna bring you back down I'm just gonna do it so I forgot to put the no, I am going to bring you back down a sec. Okay. I'm bringing you down because I'm putting, I forgot to put my bling on here. So these are metallic pearls. These are the silver ones. They come in silver and gold in the same package. And they slide off really easily. So I'm just going to slide it into place and then press it down. So I have one. I usually start in the middle and, um, and then work around the middle one so that I can eyeball it, line it up. Okay, there, now my card is complete. It's got my bling on it. <laughs> As if the shiny black paper wasn't bling enough, right? Mm. Okay, coming back up. Sorry for the shaking. Okay, so I think that's it. Unless anybody has any questions while I'm still up here, if you had questions or comments, um, I'll get back to you later. Um, um, while I was stamping, I can't see that, but you know, I have to do the stamping. So anyway, so thank you so much for coming today. If you, um, make sure that you like my video, share my video would be wonderful. Comment. Let me know that you're here. Let me know what you loved. Oh, I have one more announcement too. I just saw, I don't always read my notes. <laughs> um, so do you remember the Timeless Tidings, uh, stamp set? Um, <laughs> thank you, Julie. You're so sweet. Um, you remember the Timeless Tidings um, kit was unorderable um, for a while? Well, it just came off yesterday. So I'm having a class with it. I should show you in the... Do I have it? I think I have it in the holiday catalog. Just a second. I'm having a class with it, and I will be doing a live with it sometime shortly. So this is the kit. Timeless Tidings kit. I'm going to get it really close. It's just really elegant and pretty and really, really easy to put together, actually. Um, but it does not come with a stamp set. Um, so that's part of why I'm having a class, is I'm buying the stamp set, and you can come and use my stuff to put together your kit with me. So anyway, that's what I'm doing. So it's now orderable, and um, the class is going to be November 27. Um, deadline is November 17, so you have plenty of time to sign up. But um, just, you know, you can RSVP on my events page. Any any um, thing that you want to find, my events or whatever, are on my website, dazzledbystamping.com. So feel free to go there and check it out. So thank you so much for stamping with me. <laughs> I want you to come too, Julie. <laughs> okay, well, it's right around Thanksgiving, so just stay an extra week. You know, come visit family and, and uh, yeah, 
come come stamp with me. <laughs> that would be great. Okay, thank you so much for coming and stamping with me, crafting with me. Um, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks so much. Bye.